we're going to start by graphing ellipses that are centered at the origin. And so here is my most basic formula when it is centered at the origin, my major axis is along the x. So how do I know these two things by looking at this formula? Well, I can tell it's centered at 0, 0 because we have nothing in parentheses with that x or that y. When we start shifting it, we're going to get our x minus h quantity squared and our y minus k quantity squared. But here, if it's 0, 0, that's the same as x minus 0, which is just x, and y minus 0, which is just y. So when I have x squared, y squared, that's how I know it's centered at 0, 0. The second thing is my major axis is along the x-axis. So how do I know that? I know that because whatever this a squared is, it's going to be the bigger of the two numbers. And so when my bigger number is under my x variable, that means my major axis is along the x-axis, which means it's longer along this x-axis. Okay, so it's like if you had a circle right here, and then you took it and you stretched it along these like little corners right here, here's the shape I get. Now, remember from the intro video that A is my major, B is my minor, and C is my foci. So here's how we can find those, those ordered pairs. And then I also briefly explained in that that we're always going to be given A in some capacity. So we'll always know where my major vertices are or what the distance is between the center and the major vertice. Um, what we won't know is either B or C. And so that comes from this formula here. And this formula comes from your Pythagorean theorem. They've changed kind of the variables here. Usually we're used to C representing the hypotenuse, but you can make variables in a formula equal whatever you want it to equal, right? So if I have a right triangle right here, this is my A squared plus B squared equals C squared. It's just my legs are now called B and C. My hypotenuse is now A. Okay, now regardless if you understand that or not, that's okay. This is the formula we use to find the third variable that we need. Okay. So here we go. Example one, find the equation of an ellipse centered at the origin. One focus, I'm going to plot these as I read them. One focus is at 2, 0. I'm going to go ahead and label that as my F. Um, and a vertex at 4, 0. And I guess they told me that my center was at the origin. So I am given these three points, and now I need to build my equation off of this. Well, it doesn't tell me where my major axis is, but we always want to start there by identifying that. So as you can see here, all of these points, your focus and your major vertice, so again, even though they only said vertex here, what they mean is major vertex. So this is actually my capital MV. Let's see if I can make that a little bit neater. Okay, so my focus, my center, and my major vertice will all be in a line, just like you can see right here. You've got major vertice, focus, center, focus, major vertice, all in a line. So that tells me right there that my major axis is the x-axis. Okay, so then that tells me that I'm using this version of my formula. x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. Okay, once I've labeled what my major axis is and then figured out what version of my formula I am using. Now I need to find my A, B, and C. You will always be given two of them. We'll have to find the third one. So A 
from my first sheet. A is the distance from the center to the major vertice. So from center to major vertice, that is four units away, there's my A. B is the distance from the center to the minor vertice. I don't have any minor vertices on my graph or in my problem. What I do have is a focus. And foci is just plural for focus. So I'm saying focuses, is, you're saying foci. So C is the distance between the center and the foci. The distance between a center to one focus is two. So what I don't have is B, which is something that I need for this formula right here. So therefore, let's use this formula here. We're going to use B squared plus C squared equals E squared. So I don't know B squared, but I do know that C squared will be four and A squared will be 16. So I'm gonna subtract my four over and I get B squared equals 12. Now, when I go to graph, I do need to know what B equals, but this formula just needs B squared. So we need b squared, and we have salt for b squared. So I can write my formula, which is what it asked me to do, find the equation. So now we have x squared over, my a squared is 4, or my a is 4, so a squared is 16, plus y squared over b squared, which we found down here to be 12, equals 1. So there's the first half of this. I have found the equation. Now I need to graph this. So I'm going to put my other focus and my other major vertice. So if this focus is two units over, I'm going to go two units the opposite direction. If this is four units over, I'm going to go four units in the opposite direction. Okay, so now I need to know my minor, which is how much do I go up or do I go down? So now we need to actually solve this. So I will take the square root of both sides. And that is 4 and 3, which is 2 and 2. So this is 2 square root 3. which is about, but that still really doesn't help me as far as graphing goes, right? So two square root three is about 3.5. And if we want to make sure we got it right, the square root of 12 is also 3.5. 3.5. Okay. So from my center, I'm going to go up one, two, three and a half and label that as lowercase mv and go down one, two, three and a half. And that is my second mv. So now let's make our ellipse. We're going to connect our minor and major vertices all together. this right here. Now, this almost looks like a circle. The closer that these two numbers here are together, the more circular this is going to get. So the further and further these numbers get apart from each other, the kind of skinnier and more like really oval-like shape you're going to get. Let's do one more example using this formula here. And we're going to kind of go opposite. This one gave me some information and I had to write the equation. Now in example two, I am given the equation. I need to find some key things from this and then graph it. Okay. So first thing that I'm going to do is first always identify my major axis. Now we've only gone over x-axis, so it has to be the x-axis, but why is it the x-axis? 
the CX axis because the bigger number is under my X. I also, from this information here, already know the center. And the center is at the origin. Again, partly because we haven't shifted it at all yet, but I have X squared and Y squared. I have no H or no K. I have nothing in parentheses. So that's the same as X minus zero squared and Y minus zero squared. So my center is at zero, zero. So check, we have found that one. So I need vertices and foci. And so to do that, we need A, B, and C. <clears throat> my formula here, because my major axis is at the x, means that we have x squared over a squared. So this right here is a squared, which means that a is 5. That is plus y squared over b squared. So if this is b squared, that means my b is 3. But what I don't know is C, and I need C because C represents my foci. So let's use our formula. We have B squared plus C squared equals A squared. B squared will be 9. Don't know C. A squared is 25. Subtract your 9 over. And we get C squared equals... 16. So then the square root of 16 is 4. Okay, now I can answer my questions. I need to know my vertices, which again, when they say vertices, what are they talking about? They're talking about the major vertices. Not sure why, but they could care less about the mine. Okay, so my vertices, and I need my full guide. What I have on that previous page, if you've opened up your spiral here, my major vertices are at negative A0 and A0. My A is 5. So we have negative 5, 0, and 5, 0. Then my foci are at negative C0 and C0. My C is 4. This is negative 4, 0. And at 4, 0. And remember in my math lab to put these commas in between. So we have found vertices and foci. Sorry, he didn't see me check, but check, check. So now we need to graph it. So my center is at zero, zero. And I personally, you can use these since we've already found them, but I just kind of use my A, B, and C when I'm graphing. I know A is five. So I'm going to go five over here for my capital MV and five over here for my capital MV. My B represents my minor vertices. from So from my center, I'm going to go up one, two, three lowercase mv and down one, two, three, lowercase mv. And then my foci, I'm gonna go four over here and four over here. And now connect all of your vertices together. And this one definitely, well, mine looks more football-ish, but this one definitely looks more oval-like because these numbers are getting further and further apart. So the bigger gap you have between those numbers, the more elongated it's going to look. The closer those are together, the more circular-like it's going to get. Now, I told you we were going to kind of circle back to a concept at the beginning. It wants to know what is the constant sum from two foci at any point on the ellipse. So that came from that first page right here. 
I told you that the sum of two distance from two fixed points is a constant, and that constant is 2a. So here, if it is 2a, and we found my a here to be 5, it is 10 units. You can't write, see anything I just did, can you? So it's 2a. So that's what it is here. So if my A in this problem is five, it's gonna be 10 units away. So what that means is, if my ellipse was more accurate and perfect, if I put any point on the outer part of this ellipse, when I add the distance from here to this point, and from this point to this focus, it should be 10. Or if I get way over here, the distance from this focus to this point and this point to this focus is also going to be 10. So no matter where you put a point, the distance from that point to your two focus will add together to be whatever that constant is, which is always 2a. So whatever your a value is, it will have a distance of two times that. So I just, that's not important. That's not part of your homework, but I wanted to explain what that part of the definition is and why these foci are so unique.